Alright, I finished Kamen Rider Memory of Heroes last night, so let's go over the new features. Or the post-game stuff. I posted an overview. Posted an overview, uh... I posted a review on my channel, uh, community page last night, so... If you want my review, you can go ahead and head there. <laughs> let's check out survival mode. This is kind of like a more controlled Bloody Palace without all the filler. Uh, you have a couple just mook fights, but for the most part, you just fight bosses. Now what you get for doing this is you get e unique accelerators, and they straight up just break the game. Uh, I think they realized that this, this stuff must have been added late in development. I, I think they realized that, like, hey, our, our stamina <clears throat> and... Final form systems are not that great. Uh, the problem with the stamina is uh, a, a lot of times you'll be dodging an attacks and then you break their guard and you have no stamina, so you can't capitalize on actually breaking their guard. Uh, in this game, the only time you can do damage to any armored enemies, uh, be it just mooks or bosses, is when their armor is broken. So uh, I, I definitely had a problem with that a lot on my first playthrough, especially towards the end. The last few bosses require you to dodge quite a few times, so by the time that you dodge, you get in with a, a gap closer or something, and then break their guard, you have no stamina, which means that pretty much every action is uh, is not usable besides your basic attack. Um, you really need to capitalize off armor breaks in this game, because it is the only time that you can do damage to bosses. So the more time you spend with them not guard broken, the, the more time you're effectively not doing any damage to them at all. So you get these, uh, you get one accelerator for each, you get two accelerators for beating the game, and then you get uh, three for beating each respective mode in survival mode. So let's go ahead and show the post-game ones. So for beating the game, you get arms embracing all, which gives you ten times meter gain. Uh, in this game, when you go into your final form, you b effectively can't take damage. Uh, all damage gets transferred to your super bar instead of your health bar. So when you have this on, it basically means that you can stay in your final form pretty consistently. Uh, it actually makes the final form is worth using. Uh, one of the problems I had with the final form in this game was the fact that, like I said, you can't you can't do damage to any armored enemy until they're guard broken. So a lot of times using uh, final form wasn't as good as just using your base forms and then using a super at the end because that that would ensure that you could either kill a boss outright or just skip one of their phases. Uh, the fact that you can't do that with final forms kind of makes them feel a little bit weak, but when you have this, it actually does work. So this one basically just removes stamina from the game. Uh, this is one that you get. For, this is the other one that you get for just beating the game. Uh, I, I think they were self-aware that uh, hey, maybe our stamina and final form systems are are not that well thought out. They're not really fun to use, and they are very limiting, especially in a game where not landing a, a full armor break combo can extend a fight by like. I don't know, several minutes in some cases, <laughs> depending on how many phases they have and stuff. So, uh, You can use these, and you can effectively remove those mechanics from the game. Uh, if there's a character you like that has a final form, but you don't like how final forms are done in this game, then uh, this will basically fix it. So you get by the book, which increases your, your attack a lot, uh, your defense a little bit, and it also gives you... Uh, a little bit of a deficit in how much experience you get, but at this point, by the time you get it, most likely all your characters are going to be maxed out. Uh, the level cap in this is level 10. Uh, move set and stat progression, at least upgrade progression, stops at level 8. So I think the last two stats, the last two levels are just raw stats. So maybe this would be useful. This one is this clinches it. I think you get this for the uh, the second survival mode. This increases meter gain and uh, super bar attack, or super attack, so that might be pretty good too. And then finally, for beating the final survival mode, you get 
unlimited stamina and super bar. So with this, you are effectively invincible. <laughs> it's kind of weird that they give you a harder difficulty, and uh, it's kind of just a, a playground type thing. Uh, if you do survival mode immediately after you beat the game, then uh, you pretty much have already won extreme mode because you can just put this on whatever character you're using, and uh, none of the limiting factors of the mechanics are an issue at that point. Okay, so I'm not going to go through survival mode in this video. Uh, I will do it next time, but I'll do it with. I'll probably do this with uh, the majority of the characters, maybe over the next week or so. So let's go ahead and check out extreme mode. I honestly think this game is one of the coolest New Game Plus modes I've, I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, for starters, everything carries over. All your accelerators, all your moves carry over. All your forms carry over as well. Pretty much all progression carries over. Now what's unique is that you see I'm using O's here uh, at this point in the story. This is like the first like five minutes of the game. Uh, you actually get access to all your riders. Now, if you've ever played a Tails game, you know how annoying it is to do, like, solo runs and stuff in that. Like, there's there's people that resort to modding those characters into the party that uh, you don't have access to until later on in the story. In this game, I think this is pretty progressive for a game with multiple playable characters. They just let you play as everybody. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to do solo runs or something, you could basically do that. You know, if you wanted to do a zero... Zero one solo run or double or any of these other characters, you could effectively do that, and I think that's really cool. I think one of the things that really hurts a lot of New Game Plus modes where there's multiple playable characters, like pretty much any Tales game, is that they, they still have the same party restrictions uh, based on the story. So that can get pretty disappointing sometimes. You know, if you want to play as one specific character and they're they're gone for large portions of the time, then you kind of just have to play as somebody else. But here. You can just switch to anybody. So when you beat the game, you get a number of extra forms. You get Brokawani. And you also get Fang Joker. Now, Fang Joker is his own form, so you cannot use him. Uh, can't use him with the other forms. Uh, I, I do feel like the secondary riders and the single form characters are not very interesting to play because they don't have many moves. Uh, they did not compensate for the fact that they can't form change, so they don't have like the amount of moves you would expect from a character action game character. The other, the main three do, but. The other ones, not so much. So, uh, they're not terribly interesting to play. They kind of feel like gimmick characters. Yeah, they're fun to use in their own right, but a lot of the death in this game comes from being able to change forms at any time and being able to switch to any form with any attack that they have, including a, new, a unique attack. A, new, a unique attack at any time. <laughs> they're not terribly interesting. But they're there if you want them. Really don't have many moves to work with, so unfortunately. Where's Fang Joker? Yeah, see, that's all he's got. <laughs> Not terribly interesting. Okay, so let's show how the uh, the broken stuff works. Let's try uh, unlimited Excel trial. So yeah, so with these accelerators, you're effectively invincible. So if you wanted to play the harder difficulty, <laughs> it's more of a playground type thing. Like just play through the game without any of the the mechanic or party restrictions. 
Which I think is pretty cool, actually, when you think about it. I don't know if you actually unlock anything else for doing this. They already kind of just give you busted stuff. <laughs> There's no stamina anymore. So plot ba plot based items and stuff are still not carried over, but everything that matters is which is cool. It's kind of a shame, a lot of these forms have a lot put into them, but just due to the way that the uh, mechanics work, <laughs> there's not much of a real reason to use them. On my first playthrough, at least, it was always better to just... It was always better to just use your super meter for uh, finishing a super... or finishing a combo. You can't form change uh, attack with the final form. You can only go back to the form. But like I said, this makes you effectively invincible, so <laughs> you might have to nerf yourself a little bit if you want any semblance of challenge from this. It's kind of weird how the enemies are not scaled up either, now I'm noticing it. They're all level 1. Towards the end of this game, uh, the experience you, you get is increased quite a bit. I guess because they want you to max out at least the main three in your first playthrough. I wonder what this gives you. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious. Oh, you just get the same stuff again. Not terribly interesting. <laughs> um, in terms of runs that I'll do for this, I might do... I might do some extreme mode runs. I'll definitely do some survival mode runs because those are like those are going to be like 15 minute videos. But yeah, uh, they remove pretty much all the restrictions and the the extra difficulty with the accelerators and stuff that you get from beating the game and then for finishing survival mode, which is really not that hard at all, especially if you use the broken stuff. I think it's cool that they remove the restrictions, but it kind of begs the question of why are they there in the first place? Uh, a lot of my frustrations from playing this game the first time was that uh, a lot of times whenever I'd, I'd guard break somebody, I had no stamina to actually do anything cool, and the fact that 
They make a big deal out of Final Forms, which they should because it's a tokusatsu game, but... They are effectively useless. There's not really much reason to use them. Uh, by the time that you break their guard, it's probably going to be significantly depleted anyway. Uh, in that same amount of time, you could just use a base form, and then uh, chain a super at the end, and uh, actually one-shot a lot of bosses in this game. Uh, I also two-shotted a lot of the bosses that have multiple phases. Uh, if they have more than one phase, then you can only take off one health bar at a time. Uh, I actually basically 100% comboed a lot of the bosses in this game, so there's a lot of meat there if you like that kind of thing, but uh, a lot of the mechanics in the first playthrough don't really feel well thought out. Uh, the accelerator system is kind of pointless too. Uh, the ones that I got for pre-ordering the game were like better than pretty much anything I got in the main the main campaign until like towards the end. And then the ones that they give you for beating the game in survival mode just completely effectively remove all limitations from the game, so <laughs> uh, I feel that's a little bit uninteresting too. Apparently there's no new accelerators in this either. Uh, if I find out that someone has beaten extreme mode and something else is added, I'll let you guys know, but yeah, that's basically Memory of Heroes. Uh, from this point, I'll probably do some style runs and survival runs. Thanks for watching.